Hey everyone, Latinx Heritage Month is upon us from September 15th all the way to October 15th, and this is a great time, but not the only time, to bring out some amazing lessons to celebrate. So today I'm gonna to share with you my top five. So I think it's really important first before we kind of jump into some of these lesson ideas is to really talk about the history behind this month. So the first thing I wanna talk about, because I didn't know this myself, is the difference between Hispanic, Latino, and Latinx. So Hispanic is a term for people that uh, come from Spanish speaking countries, but not every country that celebrated throughout this uh, month is Spanish speaking like Brazil. Brazil speaks Portuguese. So Latino um, is a term for, you know, countries from uh, people from Latin America. But then we also take it up a step further. We have Latinx um, to, you know, not have it non-binary have it not generic or uh, gender specific. And let's also talk about like, why is it this time period from September 15th to October 15th? And that is because a lot of these countries are celebrating their independence around this time. September 15th, 16th, I think also like the 18th, there's a lot of countries like Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, Chile, they all celebrate their independence around this time. So that is why we have this Heritage Month right now. Okay, now let's talk about the lesson ideas. So the very first thing that I like to do to intro uh, Latinx Heritage Month is to play this video that I found last year from Nickelodeon. So it's a kind of like a music video, it's animated, and it's called Join the Celebration, or Celebration, I hopefully I'm saying that right. And it has some great things to highlight, like famous um, people, um, also the different countries that are represented in this month, um, there is some Spanish in it, so usually my students kind of pick that out and be like, oh, I know, like, what does that mean? Like, and talk about that. So it's a great video and it's just a really cool song. So I like to start with that video. And as I'm talking about things, everything will be linked down below in the description for you guys so you can easily find it. But that is a great intro video just to kind of like kick off the month. Second, let's talk about a game. I, I played this with third grade, but honestly, I could be thinking it could be third grade up. It's called Vamos a Jugar, which is like, let's go play a game. And it goes like this. Vamos a jugar el juego de la oca loca che. Vala, 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 me. Chico, 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 che. And this is a game from um, Mexico. But also, it's really fun because Vamos a Jugar means like, let's play a game. A juego is a game. And then it says, de la oca loca che, which means, oca means goose. And then it's kind of like, you're crazy goose, so come on, let's go play a game, you crazy goose, or you're silly goose, I mean. And then, uh, valo, 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 valo me, chico, 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 che. I mean, like, kind of like, follow me, boys and girls. So it's kind of like, come on, boys and girls, you silly gooses, let's play a game. And what's really cool is in Spain, there's actually a game called uh, El Juego de la Oca. And so I got played, um, I showed my students a picture of that to kind of get that connection also. So after learning the rhyme, and they actually catch on to it pretty quickly, I had the students circle up. And it is one of those games where you have your hands um, kind of like patty cake. It's not per se patty cake, is it? Uh, kind of like if you ever played Down by the Banks. I think there's a few other variations of this game. You kind of pass the beat. So the hardest part of this entire thing is just setting up our hands correctly. That takes some time. So the students circle up and I say, okay, put your right hand nice up and high, your left hand down low. And then we just bring them, like bring this hand down like an elevator. And their right hand should be on their partner's left hand and their left hand should be under the person on this side and their right hand should be on top here. So. I usually do that. They usually are like, what? Like they, some of the kids get it right away because they've played a game like this before and some of them do not and that's okay. And we figure it out. Then one by one, I say, we're not playing the game yet, but I want to just make sure our hands are set up correctly. And I will just have them pass the beat around the room and I will literally like walk, I kind of scoot on my knees and I just go around the whole circle and make sure and adjust any student's hands that are not correct. And so we have it set up. 
Now, my students did have a little trouble with like, especially like per, you know, after COVID and things, they did have a little trouble with being like, oh, we're touching. So I've also played this game actually with boom whackers. So if students are having struggle, it's maybe a battle you do not want to fight with your students because they're just not comfortable touching. I've also played with boom whackers and they just tap the boom whacker around the room. You could do rhythm sticks too. I do think sometimes they might get some fingers pinched. Uh, also pool noodles would be a great option too. So you can do some variations if your students really struggle with that. But mine, after a little encouragement, finally got over it and they just wanted to play the game anyways. Okay, so the first step is we set up our hands, make sure everyone's correct and it's low going. Then after that, I say, okay, now we're gonna play a few practice rounds and we're going to pass the beat around the room and sing the song. But on the last word, che, is going to be where that student goes to tap the other student's hand. If they on Che tap the student's hand and then they are out. But if that student understands and figures out the timing and they take their hand out, then they, uh, the person that was actually going to tap is out. I say also if a student, I have two other ways that you can be out. If a student gets scared, which happens, and they like take their hand out before the last word, then they are out. And then also if a student unnecessarily slaps someone's hand too hard, they're out because that happens naturally. So it's really fun. They pass around that beat and then we have that. Now when student is out, what I do is have the students go in and make a smaller circle. And I always say, whoever is out is always gonna start it in the inner circle and they just play for fun. Um, and then always it's the student after whoever's out in the larger circle is always going to start it again. And I usually only play a few rounds and then that's it, we're done and we move on. I never play till we get down to one person because it just takes way too long. We, our attention spans are not that great and that's okay, <laughs> we move on. Now that is the, the first day is setting up the game, setting up the hands, getting it, maybe playing a few practice rounds. That's it. Second day, we play in a large group. We know the rhyme better. We actually play for real. I usually play five to six rounds, done. Then the finally, the third day, so they can actually get down to just one winner, I split them up into small groups of like five or six people, and then they can play and actually get down to one winner. I usually let them play one or two times, and then that's it. So it's kind of a three-day game, and you can kind of scaffold it so that they're really successful and really get to learn that rhyme. Having it in just one day trying to learn that rhyme, it's a lot. So usually on that first day, I mostly say it, and then they pick it up throughout. So that is vamos a jugar. Now let's talk about some movement activities that you can do, and I have three of them actually. So the first one is the good old Los Machetes, which is also from Mexico. And it is a really cool dance because we talk about like, what is a machete? It is a, it's a sword. It can be used to like cut down crops and things like that. And I actually found a video that I showed them of men doing there, it is a, a man and woman dance, um, but I just show the men with the machetes and they're like bringing them around, all these cool moves, and they're always like, wow, that's so cool. And I, right away, I'm just like, everyone, we're not gonna be uh, using machetes in here, but we might find something that we could sub, but let's first try it without. So I have the students, this is probably for second or third grade, I have them go into a scattered formation. This is a circle dance, but I don't start in a circle on the first day. I just have them find a, um, their own space in a scattered formation. And I say, okay, this is a dance that has an A section, a B section, and a C section. Let's start in the A section. It's super simple. You're gonna take 16, uh, 16 beats to walk and clap to the steady beat. And then when you get to 16, you need to turn around and retrace your steps back to where you're at. So we do that. One, two. Then they have to turn and retrace their steps back to it. That's it. Then comes the challenging part where you have the, the machetes, it's really cool on the video. Again, I'll have a link down below, the B section. So the B section is over, then you lift your foot up and you clap under, over, under. So you're gonna alternate your legs. This would probably be easier if I'm standing up, but 
my uh, filming situation is not gonna allow me to do that quickly. So I'm just gonna pretend. So it's gonna be over, under, over, under, over, back, T, T, ta. And that would be with the met, in the video you'll see they have their swords, that's what they're doing with them. So it's over, under, over, under, over, back, 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 clap. Okay, so you do that actually four times in a row. I usually only have the practice two times in a row. So again, we're gonna do it with the music, we're gonna be moving. Then, finally, the C section, one hand on hip, your sword in the air, and you take four side steps to the right, four, and actually that's right. I did it, I think in the original dance, it's four side steps this way, four side steps, it's like kind of like right four, left four, right four, left four. When we actually put it into a circle, that was a lot for like third grade. So I turned it to actually to eight to the right, eight to the left, that was it. And it wasn't as much back and forth. And so they were kind of bumping into each other. It was too fast of a choice. So eight, so we go down two, three, four, and we're just doing like with our feet, it's just a step together, step together. Okay, and they're twirling their sword. Then you go to the other side, eight beats. Then, that's it. So it's just A, B, C, A, B, C over and over and over. So that's the first day. Then the second day, I have them try it in a circle. So that turns into them turning to the right and tapping, which they'll be using rhythm sticks in a moment, just clapping their hand, eight beats or 16 beats, I should say, going to the right, then they go to the left. Then they do four times in a row, the fancy sword pattern. Uh, the over, under, over, under, front, back, clap, clap, clap. Okay, four times in a row. And then finally, the wave in your sword, eight ste side steps to the right, then bring it back, eight to the left. And then after they can do it in a circle formation with their just hands, then I give them rhythm sticks and I say the rhythm, and they a lot of times figure it out. They're like, ooh, those rhythm sticks are gonna be our machetes, aren't they? And I'm like, yes, they are. So they can do it then with the rhythm sticks instead and they have so much fun. So that is Los Machetes. Next up is Soyo. Soyo is by Bamba Estero from uh, Colombia. And it actually is a song that they used, I think last year for like Uber Eats, I wanna say, and like Jonathan Van Ness was in it and a few other people, but it was in a commercial and it's a really fun song. Um, and it has a good message. It's just kind of like saying like, be yourself and own that and like be confident in yourself. So I found this video from, let's see, Mrs. Romo's Creations. So I will link her down below. She has a move it to it and her dance moves are just like perfect. They match the energy and the sass of this song. So I am going to not even attempt to show you because she does an amazing job. I have the video linked down below to you, uh, below for you. So thank you, Mrs. Uh, Romo. Like it is so much fun. She has it written out in the description, all the moves. It is a lot to remember, but there are some patterns and things like that. And she so nicely wrote it all out for us. And so it may take some time to memorize it, but the students love it. So it's worth it. And finally, my last movement activity is Chilili. This is from Bolivia. It is a folk dance and it is really fun. So what you're gonna do, again, I would think this is a great for, I don't know, I think your second grade, third grade could do it, but you could do it all the way up fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, it's a really fun dance. So again, it kind of has an A, B, and C section. So you are going to be set up in long waist sets. Again, this might be a thing that I might start the first day in just a scattered formation and just making sure that everyone knows what they're doing before that. Um, so pretty much though, let's pretend we did that that first day. Now we're in our long way sets. We're facing a partner and pretty much the right, let's say the right side and the left side, they're gonna be going opposite sides because they're facing different directions, right? So they're going to be going to the right four steps well, I should say three steps and then a clap. So it's gonna be one, two, three, clap. And they're gonna be sidestepping to the right. And then they just go to the left. One, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. That's the beginning. Just four steps to the right with a clap, four steps to the left, clap, four steps to the right, four steps to the left, okay? So that's the first part. But what's cool about it is because their rights like it's you know opposites because they're facing different ways. You'll see the groups like they'll be going opposite ways. Dun 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 clap. Dun 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 clap. 
bum, 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 clap, dun, 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 clap. Okay, so that's the A section. Then what they're gonna do is they should be kind of lined back up with their partner and they're gonna take some steps in and they're going to do a two hand partner clap. Then they take some steps out and they do a normal clap to themselves. So be one, two, three, partner clap. One, two, three, clap to yourself. One, two, three, partner clap. One, two, three. Okay, so that's it, just two times. In, out, in, out. And then finally, the C section, all they do is they're going to switch places. So they're gonna walk in, go past each other, and switch places so they're on the opposite side. And that's always where it gets a little bit trickier because then they're facing a different right direction, their right is different. So you just have to make sure, I think the hardest part of this dance is just making sure students know which way is right and where do they, how do they start that formation. But really fun. Um, so I really love that dance and I think it's great again for like kind of second, third, all the way up. There's some different variations as you uh, maybe look it up on YouTube where people make it a little more challenging, a little more fancy. Um, so that might be good to add on with fifth and sixth grade, um, but that is kind of the more simplified version that's great for those second, third graders. And you can kind of see what else you can add later on. Okay, that is it for this video. Uh, Latinx Heritage Month is really, really fun. There are so many more lesson ideas out there, I feel like, than I have seen in the past, which is really great. Like there's just more and more ideas. There's so many amazing picture books uh, to use. So I would love to know what your favorite um, lesson is down in the comments below. Let's share with each other and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.